And the Oscar goes to Parasite. <laughs> As we get closer to the night of the Oscars, media publications fill their front pages with articles like this, this, and this. And for the most part, the reporters usually get the technical and acting awards mostly correct. But the one that constantly baffles everyone is none other than the Academy Award for Best Picture. Because unlike all the other categories, Best Picture gets voted on by everyone in the Academy and every person ranks the nominated films in a preferential balloting system, which you can learn more about in my Oscars video last year. So, does preferential balloting make it impossible to accurately predict best picture? Maybe, but that doesn't mean that film lovers around the world don't try to guess the winning film every year. And this year, I thought I'd make more of an effort to try to make a more educated guess using historical data. In this day and age of Spotify recommendations and TikTok feeds, data and algorithmic models can pretty accurately predict human behavior. Understanding what films have won before can show us what sorts of films the Academy members usually go for. Of course, I'm not the only person who has thought to use data to predict the winner of Best Picture. I found a good few people who are way more data savvy, but equally as obsessed with movies as I am, who have created their own predictive models which have inspired parts of this video. I've linked their articles and data models in the description. This video will be the first of two parts, with this part diving into my not-so-scientific point system. And then closer to the ceremony, after the DGAs and SAG awards, I'll apply my point system to this year's Best Picture nominees. For this video, I've divided my variables into three categories, starting with part one, the data-backed variables. In the history of the Oscars, only five movies have won without a Best Director nomination, which is one of the biggest reasons why Coda's win last year was so surprising. So to factor this in, any nominee in the Best Picture list that also has a Best Director nomination gets plus two points. And similarly, according to Time magazine, films with Best Editing nominations are also more likely to win Best Picture, although it's not as strong of a correlation as Best Director. So films that are also nominated for Best Editing will also get an extra one point. And last of the data-driven variables is the number of other nominations. Most Best Picture winners are often nominated for many other categories, very clearly showing that they really are the best of the best. According to Oliver Carrington from Towards Data Science, the magic number seems to be four nominations. Although again, CODA last year broke that rule by only having three nominations. And according to Mate Varadi from Dane Studios, there's a significant increased likelihood of winning Best Picture when the film has eight or more nominations. So knowing this, in my point system, if the film has less than four nominations, it gets no points. If it has four to seven nominations, it gets one point. And if the film has eight or more nominations, it will get two points. Moving on to part two, the time-dependent variables. Timing can also make or break the success of a film's best picture chances. Data shows that ever since the Academy moved the ceremony date from early April to March, films with a December release haven't won best picture. Instead, films with an October or November release date usually snag the top prize. A fall release date gives the film just enough time to get some industry buzz, which convinces Academy members to prioritize watching certain films. It also isn't too early that it fades from memory by the time the members submit their votes. That being said, I personally believe that nominated films that come out before October and November still deserve a bit of recognition. The fact that the film made the list and was able to maintain so much buzz months after its initial release means it's got a lot of influence in the industry. For that reason, Nominated films with a release date before October or November get one point, and films that were released throughout October or November get two points. The other time-dependent variable is how successful the nominated film was in the other awards leading up to the Oscar ceremony. Did the film win Best Feature Film at the Directors Guild of America Awards? And did the film win Best Ensemble at the Screen Actors Guild Awards? Both of those awards have historically been indicators of how the industry have collectively felt about the films before we get to the Oscars. 
So if a nominated film wins at the DGA or the SAG Awards for those specific prizes, I give one point per award. This leads me to the final variable. Part three, how divisive is the film? It's no secret that film, like all art, is completely subjective. Everyone's list of favorite films of the year are going to be different. And even though at times, it seems they live in a Hollywood echo chamber, the members of the Academy will each also have drastically different rankings of each year's Best Picture nominees. And that's what makes Best Picture hard to predict. Because of the way that the points are tallied up in preferential balloting, what we are trying to guess is not what everyone ranks as their top film of the year, but rather, films that are most likely to be in the Academy members' first, second, third, and fourth ranks. We want a film that is well-liked by all, not films that would be ranked in the bottom half of the ballot because they'll be the first to be knocked out in the rounds of points tallying. This kind of subjectivity is hard to predict because we are obviously not in the film industry and definitely not Academy members ourselves. But I think a nominated film's Rotten Tomato scores can be an indicator of how divisive or crowd-pleasing a film is. Of course, the Rotten Tomato scores aren't a direct measure of the sentiments of the Academy, but usually good films are liked by a lot of people, regardless of their community or demographic. And in that way, a well-liked crowd-pleaser will at least have a high audience score, with the most crowd-pleasing film scoring high for both the audience and critics. So, informed by Rotten Tomatoes, I'd give one point for films with low critic scores and high audience scores, and two points to crowd pleasers with high scores across both. And that's it. That's my take on how we could use data to better predict the Oscars winner for Best Picture. Stay tuned for the follow-up in the next couple weeks where I use this model to predict this year's Best Picture winner. As always, leave me a comment on what you think and whether I've missed any other important variables. And if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on more spiels in the future.